I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 15th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be showing another house in the Casa Leon area in the southeast side of Leon. We're going through a little two bedroom here on this street. We're going to take you to that and show you around a little bit more of Casa Leon right after the bump. <laughs> I'm joined by an adorable cat sitting on a wall this morning who decided to just hang out oh, and leave. As I said, he's been hanging out for a while. All right, so we are on this street today. We are looking at a house uh, and we are actually waiting for the owner to come. So we're out, it is not quite eight o'clock in the morning yet. We've been very uh, good about getting up early, coming out and being ready. Uh, so they're on their way. We got a little bit. I'm gonna film some of the outside of the house. I'm gonna film the street for you so you can see this, but we've filmed in Casa Leon, if you're looking for it. I'll try to link at the end of the episode, of course, but it's the pink house episode. And we showed some of Castle Leon, which is a very uh, standard style, but large housing development uh, here on the southeast side. We're a little bit southeast of Colonia Universidad on the highway heading towards Managua, if you want to look us up on the map. But we're going to show you this street because this is a really cute little street here in the neighborhood. And uh, we're going to be looking at just one of the houses in the middle of the street. Um, I'm, I haven't seen it yet either, so uh, we'll be discovering it together. All right, this is the street we're on this morning. I'm going to start from the corner here. Very cute yellow house. Overall, I really like this street in Casa Leon. I feel like it's a lot of very well-kept houses all together, so it makes for a really nice little bit of of the, de the development. This is actually an enclosed garage. You, don't, you do not see very many of those in Casa Leon. Uh, mostly everybody parks outside. This one has amazing gardens. Gives a great example of what you can do if you're doing some gardening around your house. This blue one right here is what we're gonna be looking at. We don't have access yet, but we are able to get out back. So we're gonna take you around and show the outside while we're waiting for the owner to come. And uh, check out these neighbors. Beautiful fence on this white one here. We have a large roofed area. There's a lot of variety of what you can do with this. Uh, essentially, essentially the same style houses. There's three or four really, really standard uh, constructions that happen. And we've talked about this in, in previous episodes. These are uh, single builder um, from, with a few exceptions, everything is built from a standard set of plans. And uh, so you get the interiors are very, very standard. But the exteriors, people put in a lot of effort in uh, nicer communities like Casa Leon to have uh, a beautiful variety of outdoor spaces uh, and make it a really, really cute community. And I think this street is a great example of that. So we're gonna go past Marcella here and up the driveway and show you what we have. And this is currently an empty house, so it has not had the same lawn and, and manicuring that you're getting other places, but that will be stuff that can be fixed very quickly. It's got some decent trees out front. You can see here in the lawn area, you know, it's, it's kind of brown. This is gonna need to be watered, uh, but has a lot of potential, as you can see, for gardens, shrubs, a fence like there would be really, really nice. There is outdoor space here for a car. It is an incline, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's an upward incline, so that's not bad. It's the other direction is what is very, very tough, so that's okay. And there is space here. You could park a car up here and on that portion and be off the street. Again, this has not been kept up, but it is clean and open, so really easy to put in garden or uh, simply lawn. You could do any number of things back in this space very easy. It's not huge, uh, standard for Casa Leon. It does have a water tower, which is nice because that provides for uh, continuous water pressure. And should there be a loss of city water or a loss of electric, you can keep getting pressure. We can tell from the outside, it's gonna be a very small house, but, for my expats who are looking at the community, we've said this before, and we got a lot of really positive feedback on this. Don't think of this 
in, in the terms of a house that you normally would think of this in terms of an apartment, but one that is standalone where you have your own space. Uh, it's a lot more quiet. Ignore the dogs barking because they hear my voice. That's not normal. Uh, <clears throat> so it's a, it's much more like a, a combination of, of apartment or condo living mixed with uh, having a, a private house. So very small. This is the standard outdoor uh, laundry area. You're going to find that everywhere in Castle Leon. That's just how it's going to be. There's this extra little sink. I'm not sure why they have that, uh, but that's uh, a little bit different laundry lines tied to the water tower. We have a little roof over the outdoor space and uh, that's what we have. We're going to be heading inside as soon as the owner gets here. This is going to be a two bedroom, one bath and match everyone else on the street. So while we're waiting, we're going to take uh, we're going to take a quick walk down the street uh, and just give a little bit more of the context of where we are uh, before we go into the house. not quite eight o'clock in the morning here as I'm out for a walk one of these but there is a number of people out and about here in Castle Leon we did do some research last time I think we mentioned this on the show that the city buses do come right into Castle Leon so if this is a place obviously if you have your own car uh, that works out well here. We're a little bit outside the city. We're not like outside the city. You are well within the food delivery zones and all those kinds of things. Uh, but if you want to go into restaurants in town or whatever, you're a little ways out. So a lot of people here own their own cars, which you can see everywhere. That is very normal. But a lot of people do not own cars as well. And if you want to uh, not have to deal with owning a car, obviously you can take a taxi. We came from the farthest point of the city, uh, uh, which was about 200 cord to come out here. So uh, you can do the math, that's, that's in the vicinity of $5. Uh, and a little bit more, maybe six dollars. Um, so it's not terrible and if you were going into the city itself it would be less expensive than that you would presume. You'd find a taxi you work with all the time, they would give you a good price. So somewhere in the 100-150 cord range to get into the city is going to be expected. Uh, that would add up if you're doing it more than once in a while. Like if you're going in to go to the bars at night and you wanted to have your own transportation, not a problem. But if you were doing it every day that adds up and can become a little bit of a pain and so this is actually a public garden area back behind this right there I'm gonna turn around and head back down the street and show the other side and uh, so so for most things if you're going into the city and don't want to use a car there's a public bus which is gonna cost far less than a dollar probably somewhere in the 15 to 30 cents range to take a ride on the bus the bus comes right here into the community itself you don't have to even go out to the road and that makes things very very simple from a public transportation standpoint uh, I like this design quite a lot the outside there what is this And so transportation from here is a little bit of a concern, but a pretty minor one, as long as you're okay, either having a car, a bike or whatever, uh, or taking the, the city bus. And I know lots of Americans who take, and Canadians who take the city buses, no problem at all, very easy. Uh, you're not getting super crowded or anything coming from out here. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's absolutely uh, a decent option. So that makes this community very accessible. And of course, if you look, you can't have a community of this size, of this type, without providing solid public transportation uh, to make that possible. So that is, that is absolutely taken care of. And we're very close to places like Colonia Universidad, uh, San Agustin, uh, and others. There's a lot of very nice, the Phoenicia, uh, very nice upscale, um, expensive communities, uh, just a few blocks up the road. And this is a very large expanding community. So there's constantly more stuff coming into uh, Casa Leon as they add more streets uh, and, and whole new uh, development areas. So we're back to the house. We're just gonna wait for the owner. We're gonna be back as we go inside. Okay, we have access to the house. We're going to head on in and show you around. This is what I would describe as an extremely bare bones uh, house. This is a blank slate where you can add everything from the walls to the ceiling. There's essentially nothing here 
so don't be surprised. We're going into a, this has been used, so it's not brand new construction, but it's quite new, uh, and there's clearly, everything's missing. Some people are looking for furnished. This is not just unfurnished, it is, for the most part, unwalled and unsealed. so be prepared, but has potential. This is very small. Remember, we're thinking of this in a mode like an apartment. So this is the living space. Remember, no walls in yet. So you can paint, you can put in drywall, you can finish however you need. You can see there is, uh, this was used with a TV mounting. Over here, um, the views from the front, just to give you, we have the front door here. See out, very, very attractive outside. And the view from the window here. And then you have the door and the window in the back. So this is a very small space, obviously. And with this amount of uh, door and window, you get a lot of airflow through. So this would stay relatively fresh. Also notice this is a standard, I don't know if you caught the lizard, but <laughs> this is a standard uh, open ceiling standard here in Nicaragua. So that is not sealed. So there's always gonna be a breeze coming through at the top. Rain's not gonna come through, of course, but air will flow through. So if you're looking to do air conditioning, this is gonna be a challenge. You have to finish quite a bit of the house in order to use it with air conditioning. As it is, it's been lived in, so this can be used with fresh air without any problem whatsoever. You will hopefully have noticed there is no kitchen. This is the space intended for a kitchen. That is the drain, but there is no kitchen of any sort at this time. Now in a house this small, a kitchen can be somewhat problematic. Uh, so this does give you the opportunity. I'm trying to spin this in the best way possible. Obviously it's a huge negative lacking a kitchen, but you do have, some people are not interested in a kitchen that would take up space in an otherwise incredibly small house. This is, there's no getting around. This is as small as they get in these kinds of communities. Um, and, and then this is very important. Notice this is open air. So this adds a lot of cooling, of course. That's again, spinning it. This is unfinished to the ceiling. You could add the portion that goes up there. Uh, this is relatively common to find houses like this. So let's check out one of the bedrooms. These are very, very small. I don't think it comes with this decoration, but that's pretty cool. And then windows in here so open that up you're gonna have plenty of airflow there's none back here i do wish there was a window here i think that would have been a nice addition notice this is very clear here you can because you can see the sun coming up this is all open so this gives a continuous breeze even when the windows are closed and because it is open up here you can close the door and air is always moving through the space so this is the back room we're heading towards the front room which is going to be the same but this one has two windows so this is the master if you want to uh, think of it that way. So this is onto where the cars would go. That's the driveway right there. And then this is out the front again. So same view, open this all up and you're basically gonna feel like you're outside. Now again, notice exactly the same here. Everything's open. The rooms are essentially identical. So this is a two bedroom. And then we have the bathroom here. The bathroom is roughly standard. Everyone's gonna be basically the same. Open air, small window. And then uh, you would just put a bar across for the curtain. So from an apartment perspective, thinking of this as kind of an advanced student apartment for uh, someone who's looking for a single person or a uh, real extreme budget, um, and you, but you don't wanna be cooking or you wanna have a small thing that you're gonna put in yourself, right? Just a little fridge, just a little microwave, a little, I would put in a sink personally in the house, but that explains why there's the extra sink out back is they're using that uh, as kind of their kitchen sink. Obviously you can use the sink in the bathroom uh, to you know wash your hands or whatever, but very, very limiting from a once provided perspective and it's a very, very small house. But that also makes upkeep very easy. For people who are looking for that, that super budget, um, looking for a place where uh, they're gonna go out to eat or they're gonna order in most of the time, um, you know, is this great for a family? No, this is really uh, designed or uh, going to be better for someone who's looking for a uh, relatively basic uh, living and sleeping space, and then maybe an office or storage or a, a guest room uh, as the second um, with then just a small living space. So will it work for some people? Absolutely, but for most expats, most North Americans who are looking at this, really, this is more extreme than others we've seen that you need to think of it as a very basic apartment rather than 
a house. And, and I think it, with that perspective, it's like, okay, this is potentially workable. And if you're like me when I was younger, not having a kitchen was not a problem. Um, me now, I would be like, no, I have to have a kitchen. So that's something that changes. But for some people, like they're just not going to cook and having that kitchen in the space actually presents a, a bit of a negative because it's in the way you have to clean it. With this, you kind of get to skip that. And the apartments that we showed uh, almost a year ago in La Borio, uh, we showed my house, which of course is a full house and had everything, but the student apartments next door where my office was, we showed those, those had no kitchen, they had a little outdoor sink, they had a bathroom and a single room, and so this would be a much enhanced version of that, where there's there's just no extra amenities, it's just the living space. Uh, the op If you're not planning to air conditioning, then this open design is kind of ideal, and that is why it's like that. Because because most of these houses in this community, I'm gonna go back and show some of this. Most of the houses in this community are not going to air condition. That is uh, something you expect in more expensive communities. Could you do it here? Absolutely, but in finished houses. This one, when this is again, very common throughout the country, has no intention of ever being air conditioned. And so because of that, because there's never a cold day, uh, having the roof be open, helps with allowing the, the house to always uh, have the heat escape up at the top of the house and for wind to come across and draw air out. It keeps it fresh, it keeps it from going stale, it keeps it cooler. Um, and so this is uh, to, obviously uh, a lower cost design. This is done to save money, but it is done to save money in a way that functions in a hot tropical country. So uh, I do know expats who build their houses this way because there's an efficiency to it. Yes, it's cheaper to build, but it is also cheaper to maintain long term. Uh, so, so if you're not looking to air condition, this is actually kind of desirable. It doesn't look the best from an American perspective, from a Canadian perspective, but it is very efficient uh, and very comfortable. If you want to air condition, this is ridiculously impossible and you can't do it. So uh, it, it, I do want to point out, we can really see the frame of the house. You can see how it's a, it's a metal uh, frame that then they, they add the brick walls. And we saw one being constructed down the street that you saw this frame and there were no walls at all yet. Uh, and this, this is kind of a halfway where you can see the frame is all exposed, the ceiling is just sitting on top of it, the electrical is tied to the frame. You can see how easy it is to construct one of these, you just have to add the cinder blocks to the frame. So that's, that's super interesting, I think. But uh, if you're looking to air condition this, this is out of the question. If you're not at all considering air conditioning, then this can actually be a pretty uh, uh, wise approach because uh, if you open up these windows, this is gonna stay super cool uh, with, with all the extra cooling at the top. It works out really well. I've gotta squeeze in today's wrap up between bouts of major storm. We just had a huge storm roll through. It's taking just a break and I'm recording this for you. So the house today, I have to say it was interesting. Not what I was expecting. I did not know we were gonna get something so unfurnished, so uh, incomplete, incomplete. Um, but I do think because of the price point, because the $120 per month, uh, which is $30. The last one we looked at, the pink house, a few episodes ago, we'll link at the end. Uh, that was 150 a month. So that's $30 a month. If you don't need a kitchen, if you don't need that extra space, that is a 20% decrease in the cost of the house. That's actually something you can notice. Now, for most people, those, those things that you're gonna give up, the kitchen especially, are too much and it's going to make the house not make sense for you. But for the person who doesn't want that kitchen, who doesn't want that space, probably a single person, maybe someone who wants a small office, a small bedroom, and then just living space, the house is workable and it's an amazing price in a great location, very safe, easy to get public transportation on the road to Managua, nice modern area, 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 lots of cool neighbors, um, a big community uh, and, and you know, that safety in that country and all that fresh air and everything because you're outside the city, you're not in that concrete jungle. All that does offer some, some significant advantages. And at that price, hey, maybe it makes things an option for you, right? Uh, and uh, we do have um, some viewers who are really looking for cutting every corner. And while you can't cut more corners than make sense for you, Certainly, because if you're going to cook at home and not having a kitchen takes that away and you order out 30 times more in a month than you would have, uh, that's you should have paid for a kitchen, of course. 
Um, but if you don't want to supply those appliances, you don't want to cook at home, you're just not going to do that. You're only going to be there once in a while. You're planning on traveling a whole lot, whatever. Or you're just going to cook in a microwave and you already own it, whatever, right? If, if that's how you're going to work, then, you know, you could, you could potentially make this work. This was, this is a quirky one. It's a tough one, but I'm glad you guys came out and watched uh, with us today. It's always an adventure seeing how these things are. And, and I think this is also just very informational. Many Nicaraguans live this way because they're, they're on those tight budgets and uh, you know spending an extra 30 or $80 per month on a house uh, can be crippling. And, and they, and they don't have that option, right? Because that's, that's going to be affecting their food budget or their, their whatever, right? It's, it's going to be a significant portion of their budgets. If you're a two family, uh, two, I'm sorry, a two, uh, income family, right? You have two people and they're each making $200 a month and you have 400 total, which is not bad here. Even then, right? The difference between 120 and 200 is significant. Now the 150, maybe you would fall into that. Okay. Maybe that would make sense, but. Um, you're, you're in a spot where 20 or $30 is very significant and you, you may decide uh, to cut those corners. And of course, just because it's unfinished now doesn't mean it would be unfinished in the future. You could always uh, add things to it. You could paint the walls. There's things you could do. And it is kind of a blank slate. So that's, there's something to be said for it. But in general, <laughs> this, is, this is an odd one for sure. But thank you for coming out. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and all this going out and finding these houses and filming and all that stuff. I'm going to put the link right up above buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That will come right to me. Just type in the whole thing, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, all one word, comes right to my page. And you can buy me a coffee or three and, uh, and make a huge difference. If you are looking for relocation assistance, shoot an email to info at relocatenicaragua.com and let them know what you're looking for. And as always, if you could post on social media and tell your friends, share this link at different places, that does so much to help gain new people here on the show. It's very much appreciated. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.